Dongle Helper is a support application for the Madewell USB 3 capture dongles. It can be used to upgrade and repair the firmware, change the settings and verify the operation of the unit. In a previous video, I introduced the Magewell USB 3 dongles and showed how they could be used with software that's designed to work with webcams, like Skype for example. In order to achieve this universal compatibility, the dongles are what's known as UVC devices. UVC stands for USB Video Class, meaning that under Windows, the dongles use the default Microsoft driver unlike most other capture devices, which have a dedicated driver created by the manufacturer. The downside of not having a dedicated driver is that you don't get the sort of custom software control panel that Magewell have created for their other capture cards, where you can change a variety of hardware settings and in some cases update the firmware. The dongle helper software provides similar functions for the USB 3 dongles. When you run the application, you'll see that it has several tabs. The About tab shows you the version number of Dongle Helper, but it's the other ones that provide the functionality. Once a dongle is detected, the first tab shows information about the model, the device names by which it will be listed in Windows, the serial number, the current firmware installed, and the firmware version that was included with the Dongle Helper download. In newer versions of Dongle Helper, you'll be prompted to upgrade the firmware if the installed version is older. There are two types of firmware which can be used with the dongles, bulk and ISO. The names relate to different methods of transmitting data over the USB bus. Bulk mode is potentially faster, working at up to 360 megabits per second but there can be compatibility issues on Apple Macs. ISO mode is slower, with a maximum of 240 megabits per second, but achieves better overall compatibility. Clicking on the Upgrade button will reveal the choices available, and you can force an update to either version, even if the version number of the update is the same as the currently installed version. Here's what to expect when you click on the button. However, based on my personal experience, I'd advise sticking with bulk mode. I tried using the ISO mode firmware whilst doing the research for this video and the result was that my dongle wasn't detected by the USB 3 port on an Intel 170 chipset motherboard. Thankfully, it was detected OK on the USB 2 port, so I was able to easily change it back again. In general, if you're replacing the firmware, it's recommended that you connect the dongle to a USB 2 port, not a USB 3 port as it would be connected to in normal use. If the dongle's firmware is corrupted, and all the information shown appears as unknown, it may be possible to repair the dongle by reinstalling the firmware in a more low-level way. And here, you must connect it to a USB 2 port. Moving on to the Signal tab, it's here that you can check the functionality of the dongle and the type of signal connected to the video input. It's a useful way to check for copy protected HDCP content which cannot be captured. If you have an HDMI signal connected and you think your dongle may be faulty because it only shows you a black screen, check the HDCP status. If it shows yes, then you're not permitted to capture that signal because it's copy protected and the dongle is working correctly. If you are seeing video in the preview window, you can check on the pixel size, frame rate and whether it's interlaced or not. The dongles are factory set to deinterlace any interlaced video input, 
But if there's a need to capture interlaced video without modification, the slide switch can be used to disable or enable the deinterlacing function. The switch can still be used even if no video input signal is present. The group of drop-down controls determine how the video is transferred to the preview window and can be used to check the performance of the USB bus. Whatever the resolution and frame rate of the external video signal, the dongle can upscale or downscale both the resolution and the frame rate. And since the video is uncompressed, this has a direct effect on how much data is passed over the USB bus. So despite the fact that the preview window remains a constant size, changing the capture size and frames per second value will affect the data rate over the USB bus. This can be useful if you find you've got limited USB bandwidth and need to experiment to find how high you can go on the resolution setting before you start seeing frames being dropped. Of course, you'll need to apply what you've learned to the setting up of whatever other software you normally use with the dongle. These capture size and frame rate settings in the dongle helper are purely local and do not get stored in the dongle itself. The only permanent changes you can make are to the firmware version and to the hardware deinterlacing function. So that's Magewell's dongle helper software for their HDMI and SDI USB 3 capture dongles. It can be used to update and repair the firmware, enable or disable the deinterlacing function, and test the incoming video signal and the USB bus.